You are listening to Parenting Our Future with certified parent coach, Robin McMahon, author of The Yelling Cure and founder of Parenting for Connection. My podcast is all about providing you with the tools and solutions you need in your parenting so you can create the family you always wanted. For more information on my book and other resources, check out yellingcurebook.com. Hello, welcome back to Parenting Our Future. It's Robin McMahon here. I have a really special podcast episode for you today. This is all about putting yourself first. It is the start of 2020. We let's let's commit now to making 2020 and beyond all about us. And to help us do that, I have the lovely, amazing, and talented Amanda Ingram with me. Welcome, Amanda. Thanks for having me. So, Amanda, you are a postpartum movement specialist. You're a life coach and a glow igniter. We'll talk about that in a minute, as well as the owner of Embrace and Glow. Your mission is to support moms in discovering who they are after baby through movement, mindset, and meditation. And through your work, you have helped women from around the globe find joy, connection, and strength in motherhood. Oh, I can't. I can't love it more. I can't love it more. You are awesome. Thank you for being here and sharing your message with us. Thank you so much. Yay. Okay. So we're talking about putting yourself first, right? What does that really mean? So um, I'm actually calling my 2020 the year of you um, oh. because I feel yeah, <laughs> right because I feel like as parents or as mothers, um, we kind of tend to not put ourselves first very often. It's kind of implied that we're going to do it all. Um, we're going to look after our children, do all the things, and there's really at the end of the day not a ton of time left for us. But the fact is, it's really important to put us first. And it doesn't have to be a specific thing. It doesn't have to be going out for a spa day or something like that. It really just needs to be choosing you in whatever way feels good for you. And what you'll end up finding is that at the end of the day, you're actually going to feel so much better because of it. And you're going to show up better too. Because I think that's something that we think of it's being selfish if we take time for ourselves when actually what we're doing is kind of filling up our cup so that we can be a better partner, mother, um, et cetera. So it's just so, so important. A hundred percent. And, and the reality is, is that not taking care of yourself is actually selfish because if you don't take care of yourself and, and you build up, you build needs up that aren't getting met, then you have feelings about those needs not getting met. And that all adds to the anger that you may explode all over your family. Right. And, and I've talked about this many times. In fact, I could probably do a message about taking care of ourselves every single week, because I think it is so important, right? We need to, and, and we're, like you said, we're not talking about a major to do. We're not planning a major event for self-care, right? That word gets thrown around so much. This is saying no. This is sitting down for a minute. You know, I know so many people that are like, well, if I sit down, I'll never get up again, right? Because we're just so tired. And I get that, right? I also remember what it was like when I first had my kids and they were young and I felt like, I felt so bad for being away so bad. And it's not like my husband couldn't handle it. I just really needed to, like, I wish I could go back and talk to my, my new mom self and say like, really, it's okay. He's got this. And even if he struggles, that's okay too. Right. It like the world isn't going to end. Your, your kids are going to be okay. Let's like, just do you like, just relax and don't feel bad about it. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, I know, you know, I know that, that we want to do this, but how do we get to that point? Like, how are we going to take care of ourselves? Where do we start? Where do we start? 
So I think a big part of it is, is that trust in ourselves. And a lot of the time we, we don't really have that. I mean, becoming a mom is just such a whirlwind of change. Um, and even all the different stages of your child's life are just, everything is always constantly changing. And it can be really hard to trust that like we actually know what we need to do. And sometimes we're even told that we don't, we don't know, and we should be kind of looking outside of ourselves for the answers. And a lot of time, the answers are within us. And it's taking a moment and actually starting to build that trust. And one of the easiest ways that I, I have found what I use um, as a method for t uh, showing my moms how to trust themselves is movement uh, and moving your body every single day. And for those who are going, well, that sounds really overwhelming, um, <laughs> it's actually doing it in a way that it could just be one minute. Um, or it could be 30 minutes. It all depends on how you're feeling that day, how much time you have, and it's doing something that you enjoy. And what you're going to be doing is as you start doing that movement every single day, you track how you feel. So you're going to ask yourself, how do I feel today? And then you're going to base that movement on it. So what I get people to do is there's three steps. So it's called tune in, um, yeah, try it out, and then track it. So these three steps help you kind of start to build that trust at the end of the day. And what you do is you write down everything that you enjoy. So I always ask people, what do you enjoy doing? So you start writing all of those things down. And if you don't know anything, how about stuff that you wanted to try? And then you're going to categorize those things in easy, um, moderate, difficult. And you're also going to factor in things like time. So how much time does it take? Do I have to leave the house with all of my kids? Like all of that stuff factors into whether this is easy or hard. And then at the beginning of the day, you go, how do I feel? Do I feel like I have a lot of energy? Did I get a lot of sleep last night? Am I really wanting to do something? Amazing. So you're going to do that. But if you're kind of like, no, I slept for one hour last night. I'm hanging by a thread. We're going to do something a little bit shorter. But what it's doing is you are saying you're going to move every day and you're doing it and then you're going to check that off and you're going to show up with compassion because we're not always going to make the right choices but what this is doing is it's starting to build that trust because you're going to start to see that when you're choosing you every single day you're showing up differently you're feeling better moving your body every day has so many benefits um, including boosting your energy regulating your sleep lowering stress and anxiety all of that amazing stuff um, and then I pair that with rest, which we could talk about as we go. Yeah, but yeah. And yeah. It, it's just it's just really helpful to all build that trust though, and to really start to go. Maybe I do know exactly what I need, and I'm choosing me, and I'm seeing that I'm showing up as a better parent and as a better person. Mm. Oh, okay. Yes, we need to just take our power back and stop. I don't know what we're doing, but it is so hard to find like your internal compass, isn't it? It is. Uh, and I feel like, I feel you when you say, like, I think it's really confusing. I can remember very clearly, even in the fog of, of being a brand new mom, getting completely opposite messages from one nurse to the next nurse. And I hadn't even left the hospital, yeah. right? Completely counter opposite messages. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, what do you do? What do you trust? I just want to do the best for my baby. But I also you know, now can say, I also want to do the best for myself, right? Because mm -hmm. that is really important because what are you to your child if there is nothing left, mm -hmm. nothing left to give anybody, yourself yeah. or your child, right? So I like that. So you're talking about really going within, really tuning in to mm -hmm. yourself and noticing, right? Noticing how you feel. So tune in, try it out and track it. I love mm -hmm. it. And I think we have to notice, but you notice I think also without judging yourself, wouldn't you say? Yes. Without judging 100%. yourself, without criti criticizing yourself. And that's yep. the idea of compassion. And, yep. and having self-compassion says, you know, failure and mistakes are what it is to be human. Mm -hmm. And just in case you weren't sure, you're human. So that means failure and mistakes are a part of your experience. And it's okay. Why do we have these high standards for ourselves? Yeah. But not everybody Absolutely. else, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. yeah. Self-compassion is key when we're do mm -hmm. on this journey. 100%. So self-compassion is huge, but what about boundaries? Tell me about boundaries. So boundaries for me come in a lot with rest. Um, they can also come in with movement as well of kind of saying, um, when I think of boundaries, I think of you're saying no to something so that you can say yes to yourself. 
So that can be anything that can, that can be, you're saying no to one thing so that you can move your body that day. Um, but a lot of the time it comes into rest because one of the things um, I did a rest challenge in my Facebook group oh. and yeah. And a lot of, um, a lot of the moms said one of their hardest, one of the things they struggled the most with was feeling like they weren't allowed to rest or they had to earn it and they would just do other things instead. So instead of, instead of going, you know, I'm exhausted today, I need to sit down and rest, um, they would do something else. Or they would sit down and then just run through a list of all the things that they had to do until eventually they got up. That's one that I relate to because that's what I used to do all the time. I would never sit. Um, and I would basically rush through things with my baby as well. So instead of sitting and cuddling because my baby fell asleep on me, I would mm. sit there and go, well, no, I have the dishes to do. I have all of these things to do. No, we got to, we got to get up and put baby down and then I'd be up doing things and then regretting it later when I was like fall down exhausted. So boundaries are really, really important for that. So it's really seeing how you can say no and how that actually is really, really beneficial to you. Um, and yeah, and with rest, that's one of the, one of the main ones. It, it's going to let you kind of just feel, it's the same kind of idea actually as with the movement. So we're actually are going to ask ourselves how we feel. Um, we're going to rest in a way that feels good for us. And then we're going to see how we feel afterwards. And that's a really great way to tell um, whether that rest has been effective. And we're going to just go, um, what I say is treat rest the same as movement. So when you move your body, you're for sure going, yes, I did that today. Look at me go, way to go. But when we rest, we don't do that a lot of the time. We kind of go, oh, I was really lazy today. I just sat on the couch and did nothing. Whereas I'm like, mm-mm. I'm like, you did just as much, if not more for yourself as moving your body would have done that day. So you give yourself a high five. I do my really lame, like one handed high five. Um, yeah. to myself. Um, so like you high five yourself. Um, and that's why I did the challenge so that we could actually celebrate people in rest because um, we need to start doing that um, and celebrating rest in the exact same way you would celebrate moving your body. Because again, as I said, it's just as important, if not more important a lot of the time, because as moms, um, coming out of the holiday season, we're just so depleted. We're always depleted. Oh, totally. And if we're not filling our cup, um, we're not even going to be able to move. So I always have like that sliding scale of rest and movement. We need to do both daily and we need to do both um, without worrying that there's other things to do because there, there isn't in that time. It's very, very important. I literally want to end the episode right now and go and rest. Like, you <laughs> right? have completely blown my mind. Okay, that is so amazing. Okay, so first of all, whoever talks about having boundaries around rest, like, no, I need to rest now and not feel guilty about it. Even me, even me. So I work from home, right? I have a lovely office that I love, but I, I, I make myself and I make myself have a lunch break, right? Like I'm on my lunch break. So I go and I, I make something to eat and, and then I sit and do it. But I still feel like the whole time I'm like, no, I deserve a lunch break. No, I should have a lunch break. No, I should be able to break. So like I'm talking myself into it yep. the entire time. And then I'm like, oh, I should just check my phone, make sure, you know, there's no messages or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, come on. Yeah, it's <laughs> I need to stop this, doing that, right? Yeah, I need to give myself that, like, permission. We always need, exactly. It's this belief that we need to always be doing something. And mm -hmm. um, especially as moms too, right? Because we're supposed to be doing it all. And what, are, what kind of a mom are you if you're sitting down and actually taking a break and allowing your body to heal? What? Um, yeah, what? And yeah, and it's really shifting that away from, from the being lazy. Like no one is going to come to your house and give you an award for doing everything. They're Nobody. not? I know. It's very disappointing. I was very disappointed. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure my award's in the mail. I don't know. <laughs> right? How but, the heck? Yeah. How, like, where did we get this idea? Where did yeah. we get this idea? We've got to do all the things. And actually, you know, I was talking to, um, in one of my very first podcasts, I was talking to Lindsay Weissen, who is, uh, who's the owner of Ease Up, uh, organizing experts. And she was talking about how it, it was really around the time of the second world war where women who were moms were really only just did that job. But then when Second World War came around and the men were gone, they still had to earn a living. So they added work on top of the mothering. And so that's really where this work 
plus, you know, doing all the things has, has really come from, and it is exhausting and it's overwhelming. And I, I am so excited that you are talking about boundaries around rest. I think that is a game changer, like own it, claim it, give yourself permission to rest because we need it. And if you are doing what I do, uh, and justifying it in your head, then are you really truly resting? Like, I think, I think you're not, I think you need to really like to claim it, to, to give yourself permission so that you can enjoy it. Like, yeah, I am watching a show right now and I'm going to enjoy every minute of the show, you know? Yeah. Or whatever it is. That's my, rest, that's my right? thing. Yeah. yeah. That's my thing. I like that. Yeah. Cause like to sit and put your feet up, you're absolutely resting your body. Um, but if you're constantly still going through things in your mind, our, our brains aren't really getting much of a rest. So mm -hmm. we can kind of set intention for our rest as well. So we can kind mm -hmm. of say, if just chilling out and watching Netflix is what you need, then you absolutely should do that. Um, but sometimes we can also set intention. This is what I have my moms do is we set that intention of maybe we're going to turn off our phones and screens and we're just going to actually sit. And it can sometimes be a really great time to really look within and ask yourself how you're feeling, connect mm. to who you are. Maybe we're going to connect with baby. We're just going to snuggle with baby for mm. a little bit if they're sleeping. I um, mean, it just gives us a little moment in time to really slow down. And, and, be and turn off the noise, turn off the noise, yeah. be present. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We yeah. need to turn off the noise mm -hmm. for sure. Yes. Okay. Um, Okay, so so let's talk about, and I think we've touched on this a little bit, but let's talk about, you know, where do you start when you're a new mom? Like, where do you start? Because you are healing. This baby needs a lot. Maybe you're you're still in pain. Maybe you're still very hormonal. You know, maybe there's some postpartum depression. You know, where do we start? So I always recommend starting with just really with resting to be honest and I understand <laughs> what that means especially if we have a newborn and a toddler because I've been there um yeah, and me too. we're not probably resting as much as we could um but resting as much as we can reaching out to our support system our community if we have them um and and really trying to to take it easy and slow down a little bit um our bodies have gone through a huge event <laughs> after having a baby um, and we have gone through a huge event. If it's your first child, even when it's your second, third, it's always a huge transition. And, and most of it, we are not prepared for. We are not told that we're going to feel this way. We're not told that we may feel like we really missing our former lives while we're also super in love with our new lives. Um, people aren't telling us that they're kind of just sending us messages that we have to look a certain way and we have to, um, be everything to everyone um, in order to be a good or perfect mom. So there's kind of sometimes this, this striving for perfection that just doesn't exist. Um, and, and it's actually really a great time to turn off those outside voices as much as you can um, mm -hmm. and to really start looking within and start seeing who am I now? What does this person want? What does this person need? Um, because it may not be the same as what it used to be. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and it's okay to mourn the old you. Um, but we need to start welcoming in um, this new season of our lives. And in order to do that, going slow and really taking that time to connect, um, we kind of get these messages that we need to get our baby bodies back and be the perfect parent and breastfeeding super easy. It no. is not. <laughs> um, so it's, it's this mixed messaging that kind of makes us already start off feeling incredibly lost, not trusting ourselves. Um, and, and that shouldn't be the case. This is an incredibly powerful time in your life and, and you have brought life into this world. Mm. So we want to honor that time. We want to honor your body and what it's gone through. And it's okay to feel how you feel. That's another mm -hmm. thing. You're allowed to feel all those things. And mm -hmm. obviously if you are struggling, definitely reach out because you're mm -hmm. not alone. You're mm -hmm. not alone. Um, and, and really just start to, I say really start to build a relationship with, with yourself as well as with this new person in your life. Um, and, and connect 
to all of the feels. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, really, yeah. It's all of, it's really all about just honoring this new stage of life that you're moving mm-hmm. into. And um, yeah, that's what I was missing when uh, when yeah. I had my children was yeah. was no one told me um, how it was going to be. It's kind of hard to explain, to be fair, um, until you go through it. But no one told me that like I would be trying to be the old me while also trying to be the perfect mom. And when you straddle both worlds, I'm not really present in either of them. Um, And it ended up in me doing intense exercise because that's just what I used to do. And I was going to be the mom who did it all. I didn't need anybody's help. I didn't need to rest. I was just going to do all the things. And um, there's so much focus in motherhood, I think, on the past. So your past self, your past body, all this stuff um, that we forget to be present. We're just so focused on, on who we used to be potentially um, and kind of feeling like we don't know who we are. So we're just kind of reaching to things that make us feel like ourselves, which is totally okay. But what it's doing is it's keeping us from really discovering who we are now mm-hmm. because we've gone through this crazy transition. We've really, we've been really reborn as well as a mom. Absolutely. And so all of this searching and doing these things sometimes comes at a really big cost. And it's why I do what I do. Cause I've, I've realized that I didn't bond with my, with my daughter at all because mm-hmm. I was so busy doing all the other things. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, and I missed moments that I can never get back. Mm-hmm. And it's not meant to make you feel bad or worried or that you're not being a great mom. This is just something that I want to help people with and really, really embrace all of those feelings and connect both to your new self and to kind of let your old self um, go in a way and to mm-hmm. welcome in the new person mm-hmm. because that new person may be different. Yeah. Wow. There was a lot that you said there that was really, really good. So, um, you know, when you're starting, starting off this journey of motherhood, you know, I'm going to guess most of the people here have, um, that are listening have already had a child, at least one. Um, but, but let's share this message with new moms too, that like, you know, look, it's, it's confusing. It's a confusing time. Uh-huh. And it's okay to be confused and just move through it, right? That we are, we, you, you're right. Like we are birthing a new us too. Uh-huh. We just gave birth to a child and now a new person who's a mom. And so you are all the things that you were and now a, a bunch of new things that you are, that you are going to be, that you were moving into. And um, I'll tell you what, I felt so bad that I actually um, really missed my freedom. I was like, oh my God, I feel trapped now. I feel really trapped. I remember my mom saying to me many times, um, I bet you can't imagine your life without him. And I was like, yeah, I can. <laughs> it felt so bad. Like, it was, she's like, I bet you don't know what to do without him. I'm like, yeah, yes, I know what to do. Like, I, yeah. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I struggled yeah. to bond to at the very mm-hmm. beginning because my yeah. child wasn't, he could he wouldn't, I couldn't breastfeed him. He, he just, it just mm-hmm. didn't work for us. Um, he cried all the time. So that's really hard to bond. And mm-hmm. so, of course, my shame spiral started right away. Yeah. Um, it really from the the moment I gave birth, um, when I had to have a C-section instead of, Mm -hmm. uh, instead of, a a, I guess a regular birth, I don't want to, that sounds a little judgy, but yeah, the traditional way you give birth. Um, so, so yeah. And, and to really, and to really know that, um, those voices out there, they're trying to help you, right? Like, Oh, you're so lucky. You have a beautiful baby now. Mm -hmm. You're like, yeah, but I kind of miss working. I kind of miss, you know, Uh being with adults and all that stuff. And that's okay too. Right. But tune out, try your best to tune out those voices so that you can tune into what you're feeling and embrace that this is a huge moment of transition. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And and again, just be show up with self-compassion. Oh, um, yeah. where we're always going to be kind to ourselves. We're going to say, Oh, I wonder why I feel that way rather than beating ourselves up. Or isn't it interesting that this is yeah. happening or this is how I feel. Um, because like, as you said, yeah, there's no right or wrong here, especially when, like you said, coming from someone who was a career woman um, mm-hmm. who had a baby and it kind of gets flipped upside down when you have, when you have your child and, and now all of a sudden, all the focus is on somebody else when you focus on you for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And we're finding that, that I don't want to say balance because I don't think there really is a balance, but kind of finding 
the rhythm that works best for you in your life. Yeah. Well, and there's nothing like being a new mom to make you feel totally powerless. You know, I mean, when I think of how I felt like at least at work, I could accomplish things and there was validation there and there was appreciation there. And this, this baby, I can't even get you to stop crying and like talk about having that make me feel terrible. You know, that's, that, that doesn't like, I I felt like I was failing, you know, can't even do this right. You know? So it was definitely, um, a long time where I, where I really beat myself up because like this wasn't looking the way I thought it was going to look. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And so had I, had I known some of this, then I I wouldn't have felt so bad. So I hope that if you are feeling this way and you're listening, you know, to know that there is a bunch of people out there that understand you, Mm -hmm. that understand that it's hard that have had that same experience. And maybe you don't have friends around you that are like that, but you know, there, there, there is a community of people and um, we're going to talk about a community of people uh, of like-minded moms um, shortly. Um, And of course there's always my page to, to be a part of as well, which is on Facebook uh, parenting for the number four connection. You are currently listening to the parenting our future podcast. I'm parent coach Robin McMahon. And if you're enjoying this podcast, please share it with someone who you think might also need to hear this please don't forget to subscribe. And I would be grateful if you gave me a five-star rating on iTunes. If you're a parent who's struggling and you feel like you might need some support to be the confident leader of your family, where you can calmly respond to any kind of behavior, disrespect, or your kids not listening to you, well, I have a membership group that you might be interested in. All you have to do is go to kamomsclub.com for more information. That's kamomsclub.com for more information. Now, back to the show. You are a glow igniter. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Tell me about embracing your mama glow. What is that all about? So um, I kind of believe that when we're born, we have a really bright light glowing within us. And that is kind of that joy and wonderment of, of being a child. So we're just ecstatic that our legs will carry us. Um, and then, but as we get older, uh, we're kind of told we need to fit into a specific box. We need to look a certain way. Um, and limiting beliefs um, start getting placed upon us and it starts to kind of dim that glow. And when we have our child, we actually kind of get to see that light brought into this world again. Um, and it's just such a wonderful time because when we are reborn as well as into motherhood, um, it's a time that we can start to reignite that glow within us, um, and kind of see the world and ourselves the same way we, our child does. So to kind of see that joy and that wonder in movement in your body, um, and, and really, really shift how, how we see ourselves and let go of those limiting beliefs, um, and that's really what I tr- want to bring to moms is to really embrace that glow within you um, and nurture it and see yourself um, and how your body as a powerful thing that has brought life into this world and see that you can find joy in movement. It doesn't just have to be a punishment to your body um, to look a certain way. It can actually just be an enjoyable part of life um, and that you can rest and find joy within that as well. So it's really, really bringing joy back into life. Hmm. Yeah, I, I know that I have spent a lot of time hating my body. Um, you know, I've struggled, I've struggled with weight and uh, and different things throughout my life for as long as I can remember. And um, and I, I do remember a moment where I where I just flick the switch and just said, wow, I am so lucky that I was able to have two babies. Not everybody can have that, you know, that I would, that I have two healthy children, you know, um, and that my body was there for me when I needed it. It did what it, what I needed it to do, you know, and, and, uh, and it is powerful and created life. And that is, you know, pretty amazing. And this body carries me through this life. This body allows me to do the work that I do and be the mom to my kids. So to hate it is doing it such a disservice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's not an easy journey. I mean, it it can be something that's lifelong um, for people, Mm -hmm. but again, 
uh, say it again, is compassion as much as you can Mm -hmm. and really shifting away from looks to function. So when we can kind of really focus on how our bodies function over how it looks, um, we can start to begin to build um, a nice positive relationship and same with moving your body daily too, because you kind of get to see what your body can do. And when you're moving in and doing things that you actually enjoy, Mm -hmm. um, it it kind of shifts how you see yourself, um, which can be really helpful as well. Okay. So you just said function to looks. I, I, okay. So that's, that's, that's an interesting way of saying it. Mm-hmm. But what about if you're in pain? What if you can't function as well? What about that? Yeah. So, I mean, especially with new moms too, we sometimes uh, we're in pain after you have a baby and mm-hmm. sometimes that pain doesn't go away. Um, and what I really recommend doing as much as possible is, is taking this time to, to see maybe it in a different way. Um, that maybe this is a time now to rest um, and to focus on something different, still something that you enjoy, but maybe it's a time to focus on something um, that isn't what you maybe thought it was going to be. We, we tend to put our pre-baby selves on a pedestal um, and everything is measured to that standard. Um, and I would really encourage people to, to go with, now that you've had a baby, this is your new normal. So we're going to compare to that. Not, and, and really, I wouldn't compare very much at all. But if we are going to compare, we're going to compare to that normal. Um, and what that can help do is really put into perspective the stuff that you are doing. Um, and maybe start shifting into what is your new normal. Um, maybe the things that you thought you really enjoyed, you actually don't enjoy and you were just doing them for others. Um, and if you are in pain, maybe now's the time to really start working on building a strong foundation and, um, taking that time to really maybe get stronger than before. And if it's something that the pain is going to eventually go, if you've just injured yourself or or if there is um, a pregnancy um, injury, maybe broke your tailbone or something like that, um, it's, we can get back to the things that you really do enjoy and maybe even stronger than before. Um, a lot of the postpartum movement is very, is very gentle. So it's, it's really okay. just about slowing. It's really about slowing down, <laughs> to be honest. And feeling. Can I just add, okay, so that, that's all really good. Um, you're, yeah. you're saying build a strong foundation. What do you mm-hmm. mean by that? Do you, are you talking about like your core muscles or are you talking about like a mental foundation? So both. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so we're going to, uh, thank you for asking that because yeah, it is important. So we want to build, um, a really good, strong physical foundation, which is your core and your pelvic floor. So when we can really turn on those deep core muscles, uh, we can start to feel stronger. Um, and, and it's interesting. And I always hear this from people is that the movements that they're doing don't feel like they're, they're not intense movements, but what they're yeah. doing is actually creating a really deep strength that later on the mo- my moms will be like, wow, like I really do, like I stand taller, like I feel supported. Um, and because we are asking you to slow down, we're creating a nice, really strong mental foundation too, because yeah. you are starting to see, especially if you're dealing with pelvic floor issues, um, I know we're, we were talking about pain, which pay, uh, pelvic floor issues can be um, part of pain as well. Um, as we start to rebuild that foundation, um, you, you may be seeing that those, that pain is lessening or the symptoms that you were having are starting to go away potentially. Um, mm-hmm. and it can really start to help you see your body in a better light as well as just feeling overly like strong again, mm-hmm. um, overall. Um, and it, it just really, it can just be really helpful and it, it forces you to slow down, which mm-hmm. is also really helpful and connect. Yeah. Like that's not a crime. No. <laughs> so, you know, okay. So, uh, I'm now thinking about myself (laughs) because I have, um, I have really seriously injured my knee. I don't know what I've done to it. I'm in the process of figuring all that out, but it's been over a month where I have been in excruciating pain. And, um, the, the, the reason why I heard it, cause it's kind of funny. That's why I'll tell you is that, um, my dog ran away. So, um, I, I am like a jump to action kind of a person. I grabbed treats and I had my slippers on and I ran a couple blocks down and a couple blocks away in my slippers to get him. Um, I managed to rescue him before he went, uh, I mean, he could have gotten, gotten hit very many times. Anyway, managed to rescue him. And since then my knee hasn't been the same. So, um, 
I, I'm not a new mom, but I am in pain and I, you know, I definitely am always wanting to do the next workout. I want to move and I get really upset when I can't move. But as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, okay, Robin, maybe this is my time to really work on my mindset. Maybe this is the time that instead of taking the time to go work out like I would have done, maybe I take that time to really do a meditation, um, work on my mindset, set intentions, right? I love the idea of setting an intention for rest. That's yeah. awesome. Um, so, so maybe that is an answer to what I'm searching for and maybe some other moms too, right? Yeah. Um, because I, <laughs> my kids call it, uh, when, they're, when they're gaming, they call it rage quitting a game. I have like 100% rage quit like my diet or my life or whatever because I'm just so mad because I've, uh, well, I've, 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 I've had injury ever since I had kids. <laughs> never been hurt before. But since I had my second child, I've broken my, my right foot twice. I had knee surgery and gallbladder surgery. Um, and I've, I had a third degree sprain of my ankle and my knee injury and a bunch of other stuff. So I've had like all of these things. It's like every year there's something. And I just, I just feel like two steps forward, one step back every time. But, but I think what you're teaching me here is like, okay, we don't have to just work on our bodies. We've also got to work on our right. mindset too. And truthfully, I could be doing crunches if I wanted to, because that doesn't involve my knee. I could be doing arm work. It doesn't yeah. And that's what I was going to say too. So like, there's always an alternative. Um, there's always something that you can do. So you can, you can kind of figure out what that is too. And then it's going to be as that heals, honoring that. So it's very similar to postpartum period is as you're healing, we're not just going to jump back into something. We're actually going to ease into something, build again, a foundation, which actually pelvic floor and core stuff actually does help with, um, with supporting your knees. Um, really? It, or not. Mm -hmm. it really we'll helps talk. get everything. Yeah, we will. Um, but yeah, so anyway, but yeah, it really is kind of, um, try because I get it because as um, as an athlete I used to um, be an ultra runner um, when you get injured it's really hard yeah. um, because that is something that you kind of um, see in yourself so like I just associated myself with that's who I am that's what I do who am I now that I don't do that or mm -hmm. it's all gonna fall apart all the stuff I work so hard for but in actuality you're still you you're still mm -hmm. awesome person what you do doesn't define you um, that self-worth is always there for you and you're always amazing regardless of whether you can run or you can do the things that, um, that you want to do. So when in injury, we can kind of remind ourselves of that, that, um, and this is, can actually also be with motherhood because we are having an identity crisis sometimes and we can just kind of remind ourselves that, that we're awesome no matter what. And we, we know who we are and what our bodies are, or we're working towards that if mm -hmm. we don't. Um, cause it's definitely possible that we don't. Um, and, and yeah, and it's really just honoring this time and trying to see, cause I like to always find a positive in, in something. It's what I, it's what I do. Um, and so we, we try to find out what is the positive that can come from this. So yes, yeah. maybe it's time for you to actually take a moment to slow down and look and look within. Um, mm -hmm. And just how I kind of believe that that's what motherhood is. We, we, we need to take a few moments to slow down. And it's not what we're told that we need to do, but it's what we need. Yeah. Well, we're telling you right now. That's what you need, <laughs> right? Listen to us because we know. <laughs> We've been around the block a couple of times. So we know. <laughs> right. And your message is beautiful. So how can you not love it? How can you not want that? Um, okay. So let's do this. Let it, let's... Um, Let's sort of end this with your message for moms. Like, what is it that you would say to the moms that are listening right now? So I always, my, my thing has always been, it's okay. Um, and it's what I say to everybody when they come to me with anything. I'm always like, it's okay. It's okay to feel how you feel. It's okay to want to rest, but it's actually okay to want to do all of the things. Um, we never want to, our feelings should never be discredited. Um, even though we're told that we should feel and think a certain way. Um, but really, the answers are all within us. We know what we need. Um, 
we need to start building that trust in ourselves again. And we need to allow ourselves to slow down to do that. We, we don't have to do it all. We don't have to be striving for, for our pre-baby selves. Um, we are allowed to rest, to recover, to heal, and to connect with our babies. And we can move and do all of the things that we want, but let's do so in a way that we enjoy, not in a way that feels like it's um, not sustainable or if it feels like it's stressing you out. It just, it doesn't have a place right now um, in your life because what you have done is created life and brought it into this world. And there's nothing more powerful than that. And I want to shift this time instead of being this time of criticism and, and breaking down all the things that we're doing wrong and changing it to a, to a time of celebration of what you've accomplished, of this magical journey, of this season of life that you are entering um, and really bring, bringing that back. Um, and it would change how we see moms, how we speak about moms, how we speak about ourselves, if we could shift it to the celebrating. Um, and that's what my mission really is, um, is, to, is to bring that here and to get moms moving and resting mm -hmm. and feeling good in their bodies. Um, so that's what I, I want for all moms really, is to really celebrate how mm -hmm. powerful and amazing you are because you are, even when you don't feel like you, you, are. Just you are, just, you just are, yeah. um, you're powerful just by being, <laughs> yeah. um, and it's really time to start to look within and start tapping into that amazing person that you are mm. and that powerful woman that you are. That is so beautiful. Thank you for that. I love that. Celebrate it. And, and I think you celebrate the highs and the lows right? That's all it is. All That's all it is. It, it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is really beautiful. And you have dedicated your life to supporting moms. So what is it exactly that you do in your business? And, and yeah, how do you? Yes. Yeah. So what I do is um, I bring kind of movement and life coaching together into one. So I use movement as a way to, to really do all of these things, to tap into who we are now, to make that journey, this wonderful transition into motherhood, and to kind of start tuning out those outside voices and really trusting in yourself and listening to what you want and what you need so that you can show up in joy in your life and you can show up as a really great parent to your child and you can be connected and present for all of those moments while still doing those things that you need for you and for bringing that rest into your life and really all around just embracing motherhood and all of its amazing uh, things that it brings to the table as well as the struggles um, and just feeling really really confident so kind of going from feeling lost to knowing that you're limitless what I really like about this is that there are times you know it, it, when we're when we're new moms where we may have lost our way and we may need some help. And so that's what you're here for. You're here to help those who feel that way, find their way. And it's okay to, to put your hand up and say, you know, I am really lost. I am in the darkness. I have lost my glow. How do I get back? How do I get back to, to thriving? And, and it's not about how do I get back to being the person I was before because you are fundamentally changed and different right? So how do I, how do I go from where I'm at to celebrating my life, motherhood and celebrating what is right. And that comes with accepting what is and, and just hearing it, it's okay. The allowing the acceptance and having somebody support you and who is in your corner, no matter what, that's what you're offering. And that is really beautiful. Really. Thank you. Yeah. That's what I, it's really what I want to bring to the table. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, you and I share that goal in supporting moms. You know, I, of course, support parents, both moms and dads, but really, you know, moms are the core of, of who really um, follow my work and, and, uh, and you know, um, are interested in, in what, what I have to say. So I just want to really thank you for being here. And you're offering um, anybody listening here to join your group. Yes. right? Where Absolutely. you have lots of different things going on. Um, you know, when this airs, you know, people may be listening to this, um, you know, months after it, it, the original air date, but you do offer different challenges and, and things like that, mm -hmm. which, is, which is up for uh, anybody in, 
in your group to participate in, correct? Yes, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're starting one um, really soon, like today, if you're watching it on the day it was released. So if you want to join uh, the Moving Mamas um, Facebook group. Uh, which I believe there'll be a link for. Um, yeah. So yeah, so it, it's it's going to be lots of fun. It's going to be basically what um, what I've talked about. So it's about having movement daily that actually um, fits into your life instead of trying to fit your life around movement. I mean, that's great. So yeah. so great. <laughs> well, you have given me and and everybody listening some really great advice. I really love this. Thank you so much. Thank you. For it's everything. been lovely. Yes, it has been lovely. All right, Amanda Ingram. Thank you for listening to this edition of my podcast, Parenting Our Future. I'm parent coach Robin McMahon. And if you're enjoying this podcast, please share it with someone who you think might also need to hear this message. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you like my work, I'd be grateful if you gave me a five-star rating. For those of you who like my content and want more, visit me at yellingcurebook.com to get your copy of my book and to find other resources to help you. Until next time, I am wishing you and your family peace and connection.